Hi guys, this is Gregor for Personas and today is an episode that many of you have been asking for for quite a while and that is how to work properly with multi-channel instruments in Studio One. I see a lot of people struggle with this particularly because they don't realize that having one track in your arrangement doesn't mean that you also have one channel for it in the mixer. And while that may seem a little bit strange at first, this concept gives you amazing flexibility and advantages once you get used to it. I will also show you in this tutorial how you can work with other multi-channel instruments that are not native to Studio One, such as Superior Drummer 3 by TuneTrack or Contact from Native Instruments, so that you can really get familiar with that concept, not just with our own instruments, but with other VST or AU instruments as well. Full disclaimer, this video is going to be pretty much packed with information. So if you have to watch it multiple times or if you have to pause in between, that's no worries at all. But hopefully it would at least serve as a manual, a reference manual where you don't have to skip so many pages. In Studio One, there's no strict one-to-one -one relationship between tracks, such as instrument tracks here, and mixer channels. That means that we can have as many tracks as we want for instruments and their respective output channels. And while that may seem confusing to beginners of Studio One at first, this comes with many great advantages. For instance, with Impact XT, we automatically get one instrument track where we can compose all of our drums, you know, a kick drum, a snare, a click and a hi-hats, but we still have the ability to mix them all completely separate in the mixer. All of our kicks, our snares, our hi-hats, our percussions and our toms, etc. completely independently. So just because we have six individual outputs in the mixer, we're not forced to have six separate instrument track lanes where we have to write our drums. We can still write them all in one consolidated pattern, for instance. That is incredibly useful. Of course, this doesn't have to be this way. If you want to have separate instrument track lanes for your multi-channel instrument, that's absolutely possible. Simply hold down Command on a Mac or Control on the Windows PC while dragging down and then let go. This is how you duplicate a track that's still assigned to the exact same instrument and then you can just open up the track inspector if you don't have it open already. Uh, you can also press F4 key and then select a different channel here. So now it would go to channel snares. Now you can do that again and assign another one to your hi-hats. And this is how you would have full independent control over your kick, your snare, your hi-hats, but all of these would still trigger the same instrument, just different outputs within that instrument. To manage your outputs, you click right here on the output list. And this is how you can select and deselect your individual outputs. You can also assign uh, pads in Impact XT to different outputs by simply clicking in the bottom right corner of them. Now the workflow is the exact same with VST instruments as well and AU instruments for that matter also. And I'm going to look at two examples with you guys. First of all, we're going to look at TuneTrack Superior Drama 3, which is really representative of most uh, VST instruments out there and how they're going to behave in Studio One. And then one exception to the rule, which is going to be contact from native instruments. With Superior Drama 3, it couldn't be easier really. I just prepared a very simple MIDI loop right here, but I still want to have full dedicated control here in the mixer, not just with one stereo out for all the drums, but full independent control of my kicks, my snares, my hi-hats, my toms and so forth. To do that, all you need to do is go to the mixer here in Superior Drummer and then just scroll all the way to the right where you have your outputs and then simply assign your kick to out one and two and then perhaps your snare to three and four this is of course completely up to your own preference. I'm gonna have my hi-hats on five and six here, my toms on seven and eight, and then the overhead, as well as the ambience and the effects I'd like on one stereo uh, channel that I could call room, for instance. So that's gonna be nine and 10. Let's see what happens as I play this back. You can see that I have different levels here in Superior Drummer, but I really only hear the kick drum right now and that is because only output one and two, which is currently assigned to the kick drum, is being sent to Studio One. To change that, we click here on the output list 
And then all we need to do is take the additional boxes off the channels that we've just added. And you see that they're now being added in the Studio One mixer also, and that's really all there's to it. Now I have my snare drum here on three and four, like I said. And that essentially enables me to compose all of my drums in just one MIDI track and have still full dedicated control over each individual channel in Studio One. Keep in mind, you don't have to write all of your drums in just one instrument track. Just create another instrument track, assign it to a different channel, and you're good to go. There's no one-to-one -one relationship between tracks and channels in Studio One. You can have as many tracks for your available channels as you want. Now with Contact, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. For reasons not entirely known to me, uh, the VST version of Contact doesn't report its usual outputs correctly to Studio One. Hopefully that's something that native instruments can uh, improve in the future. But the AU version fortunately does. So if you're on macOS, then I would recommend this one time to go for the AU version over the VST3 or VST2 versions, because in Contact, the AU version actually reports the outputs properly. Now I have a different separate video where I show you how to set up Contact in the multi-output um, configuration on the AU version. That is gonna be linked in the video description. But if you're using the VST2 version or you're on Windows for that matter, simply drag in contact from the Studio One browser to your song to add it. And then you have to do a couple of steps. Fortunately though, you only set this up once and when it's set up, it's very easy to recall and it's quite flexible actually. The approach I'm showing you here is going to give you four outputs per contact instance, which is gonna be enough for most people. So what am I talking about? You open up contact and then you wanna click here on this icon and then make sure that the output tab is visible as well. Then you should see one assigned stereo output and these four aux stereo outs. These four stereo outs are what's gonna give us those four individual output channels in a sec. After you've done that, you wanna click on the first aux and then make sure that's assigned to KT aux one. Now click on that arrow to the right and repeat the same step, but now for aux two, three and four. Don't worry, like I said, we're only gonna do this once because we're gonna use a little trick here. Then you click OK and Contact lets you know that you have to close and reopen all the Contact plugin instances. Uh, so yeah, just go ahead and do that. Click here once and open it up again. And now here comes the important part. Click on this preset manager icon in Studio One and then store this as the default preset. So every time that you open up the contact, this is the configuration that you're gonna get automatically. The rest is pretty simple. Just add contact to your song like this. And if you wanna have a multi-output setup, then click on the output list right here, disable the first stereo out and activate the aux channels instead. Now you can add your instruments. So let's just, in my case, add an analog dreams here. And um, as you can see right now, it's coming out of uh, one and two, but we haven't enabled those. You can enable them if you want, but I prefer having two dedicated separate outputs. So in that case, I won't use that one because it would be utilized from all instruments. And instead, I'm just gonna send this sound to one or multiple aux channels. And to do that, you need to click on this tiny aux button right here and scroll down and here you see the aux sense and as soon as I turn up aux sense on uh, channel number one, you can see that this instrument is now coming out of uh, aux channel one. If I wanted to come out of aux two, then I would just turn that up instead. And I could also mix the two, which is kind of interesting because as you're bringing in more instruments, you could send them you know, to different aux channels at once and mix them together. So if I add another instrument here, and I show the aux channel here, that could send that on aux three, but a little bit also on aux one and have a little bit of a crosstalk going on almost between these instruments. So as you can see, contact is a little bit clunky in that regard, but it also gives you a lot of flexibility when it's set up.